So a culture with a thousand uh, bacteria in it doubles every three hours. And uh, we're going to answer some questions about this. For example, like, um, or we'll answer the question, um, when would there be a hundred thousand? So with this, with this uh, exponential modeling, one of the things that um, I want to get at is a couple of different models we can use to do it. And one of them, since it's doubling, is going to be a base 2 model. And the other one is going to be a base E model. And, and both models have, have their place. Um, the base 2 is nice when you know it's doubling. If it's just growing exponentially and you're not sure about it, um, the E is a, is a good uh, model to use. I'll talk about both models here and how to use them. Um, and I think on this problem, E is going to feel like overkill, but I'm doing it to demonstrate uh, how that model works. And we'll use that one in, it, it's a better choice for other problems. Uh, I have time and the number of bacteria. So at time zero, there's a thousand. It's kind of, that's like where it starts. And it doubles every three hours. So I know that as the time goes up by three, this is going to double, so times two. So this would be uh, 2,000 after three hours. And then three more hours, this would be up at 4,000. Yeah, uh, nine hours, it's going to double. So this would be at 8,000. So that actually helps me think about a base two model. So I know that it's going to be like after nine hours, it's doubled three times. So I would know that I would start at a thousand and I'm going to double three times, but that three comes after nine hours. So what I want you to notice is that, um, three doublings, it, since it doubles every every three hours, what I could do is I could think of this as um, this time divided by three would give me a double, right? Like, because three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two, nine divided by three is three. That tells me how many times it doubled. So see how I have uh, my initial amount, 1,000 times, it doubles every three hours. I'll just use A for amount. So that's my base two model. My base two model, um, I have this N sub zero that I'll call the initial population N at zero times two to the power of the time divided by A, and this A is the doubling time, however long it takes it to double. Now that model is really good when I know that it's doubling and I know and I know its initial conditions. So I could uh, kind of just go from here. This how many after seventeen hours? Well, uh, one thousand times two to the seventeen divided by whoops t divided by a. It's yeah seventeen, and it's doubling every three hours. So know that notice it this will have doubled this many times in 17 hours, whatever 17 divided by 3 is. Let me throw that in my calculator. Um, 1,000 times 2 to the, and then I'm going to put this exponent in parentheses, 17 divided by 3. And notice I put that in the parentheses, so it's 2 to the that whole power. Otherwise, if I didn't have these parentheses, it'd be 2 to the 17th. It would calculate that and then divide by 3. So it looks like about 50,000, 50, I'll say 50,800, just round it off. And then this question of when is it at 100,000? Well, 100,000, I want that to be my output. I know I started with 1,000, I know it's doubling uh, every three hours. And then I just solve that for t. So I can divide both sides by 1,000. That gives me 100. 
This is 2 to the power of, so I'm going to use log base 2. Keep going, multiply both sides by 3, so it's 3. Log base 2 of 100. This is, I can use change of base formula for that. And let me do that on my calculator. Uh, 3 multiplied by natural log of 100. And I could do log 10 too. Uh, divided by natural log of 2. 19.9, about 20 years. So I'll say about 19.9 years. So knowing that it's doubling, I can use this model, which is really, really convenient. So I want to show you the other model, the E model. The E model um, takes a little more work initially, but it's actually really good for, uh, for certain types of problems. So my E is going to be basically same idea, initial times E to some power. And basically it's E to the power of some rate times the time, the rate, the growth rate. That's still initial population. And T is time. So I'm going to do a little curve fitting here. So I'm going to take what I know. I know that my I start with 1,000. Now if I go e to the power of some rate uh, times time, it would get to a certain point. Well, let me think about what I know here. I know the time. I know in three hours. I'll write this as 3R. It, this will have doubled. So now I just need to solve this for, for R to figure out what that rate is, and then I can have my model I can use. So divide both sides by 1,000. And that's going to be 2, because it was doubling. Now undo E with natural log. Natural log of 2 equals 3R. Divide by 3. My rate is natural log of 2 over 3. Notice doubling in 3 hours. So natural log of 2 divided by 3. Do that on my calculator. Natural log of 2, close off the parentheses, divide by 3. I get about... I'll go out three decimal points, so it's about, about 0 0.231. So I've got about uh, 0 0.231 for that. That means my, my model here would be the initial population times e to the power of 0 0.231 times the time. So then now what I could do is I could answer these same questions using that new model that I just came up with. So how long after 17 hours, how many after 17 hours? It'd be 1,000 times e to the 0 0.231 times 17. I'll do that on my calculator. 1,000 uh, multiplied by e to the, if I use that e to the x button, the parentheses comes in with it. Uh, it was 17 times, what was it, 0 0.231? Let me take a peek, make sure. Yeah, 0 0.231. And I rounded a little bit, but I get about the same amount, uh, 50,800. And I could use this model to solve this problem as well. When is it at 100,000? Well, then my model, when would that equal 100,000? Divide both sides by 1,000. 100 equals e to the 0.231t. Undo that e with natural log. Natural log of 100 is about that 0.231t. Uh, divide both sides by the 0 0.231. Shove that into my calculator. Natural log of uh, 100 
divided by 0 0.231 and I get a 19.9 years. Yeah, which is the answer that I got before. So about 19.9 years. Great, so I have these two models, this base two, or if it's doubling, this would be a three if it was tripling, and this E that will work for no matter how fast it is growing, but I need to find the uh, I need to find the growth rate. And actually, if it's growing exponentially, it's always doubling at some point. Like even though you might be told it's tripling every four days or something like that, it's still doubling at some rate. Like you can you can use this for anything. This is growing at a rate of e, you know, just like the continuous compounding. All right, so we have a situation. We're just going to try and write the equation in both forms for this. So after eight months, there are 4,100 rabbits. The population doubles every five months. What's the equation? Um, so let's look at this doubling time one. Um, we know that it's doubling. We know it's doubling every five months. So we know that this would be t over five. Now, after eight months there, so we don't know the initial population, but we can find it because we know that um, at a certain point in time, there are 4,100 of them. Eight divided by five. So at eight months, there are 4,100 rabbits. And so we have this n sub zero times this uh, two to the eight fifths. That's just a number. So if I want to know the initial population, I can divide by the two to the eight fifths. So and probably going to be doing some rounding. That's okay. Let me shove that into my calculator. Um, 4100 divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, two to the power of and in parentheses again, eight fifths, because I want the whole eight fifths to take into the power of, of eight fifths. So I'm going to say uh, this is 1352.49. So how about I just say about 1352? It's just going to be where I'm at, about 1352. So this equation would be about. And then I can answer questions like after 17 years, how many would there be? Or um, how how long did it take to get up to a certain population? You know, how long, if this rate continues, how long would it take to get to a million? Set this equal to a million and solve it. Okay, let me write the equation for the other, the other case. So um, I'm going to pretend like I don't have any information. I, I, I'm going to pretend like I don't know that. I'm going to do this from scratch. So I know that the amount is some initial population e to the rate times time. So after eight months, there are this many of them. So 4,100 e to the r times the time. So, oh, and my time is uh, is eight. So I'll write this as eight r. Now that I have two unknowns in there, I don't know the rate, and I also don't know the initial population. But I do know that um, it doubles every five months. So I do know that this, if I double this, eight thousand two hundred, that would be five months later. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I know that. All right. So here's how this is going to help me. From here, I can do a pretty cool trick. Uh, I'm going to divide this equation by that equation. So I'm going to go this. Divided by this. So basically what I've done is I've divided both sides 
of this equation by the same thing, right? 4100 is equal to n sub 0 e to the 8r. So I divided both sides by the same thing. So if I divide this out, that's a 2. If I divide this out, the n sub zeros go, and I, no I notice I have e to the 5r. Now you're not going to have to do that a step every time because what we know is it doubles every five months. It doubles every five months. Let me go to solve this some more. Natural log of 2 equals 5r. Natural log of 2 divided by 5. There's my rate right there. Natural log of 2, close it off, divide by 5, 0.137, I mean, I'm sorry, 9, 0.139 about. It doesn't exactly equal it, I'll say it's approximate. So this equation, uh, now I know my rate, 0.139, so let me put in here what I do know, A equals n sub 0 e to the 0.139 times time. And now I can use that to find my initial population. Now, this kind of fancy step that I did right here, there's another way I could, I could have gone about doing this. I'll come back and find my initial population in just a sec. And it's this. I know that the population doubles every five months. So I'm just going to assume if the population was 1, it will double in five months, right? And I get straight to this. I don't have to go through setting up two equations like this and, and bounding it out. I can just say the rate is what matters. What doesn't matter is my initial population. So whatever my initial population is, the time it takes to double will always be the same. So I can go straight from here to get that R value. Now I'll use what I, what I know to get that um, n sub 0, that initial value, and that's, there are 4,100 rabbits. At 8 months. So this right here is just a number. If I want to know this, I can divide 4,100 by that. So 4,100 <clears throat> divided by that. Thousand one hundred divided by e to the uh, 0.138, I think it was, times 8. I get that same value. Uh, it's a little bit off, right, because I've done some routing, but I'd say about 1359. That's okay. I mean, I did I did some rounding, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit off from here. It's not too far, but then my, that would make this model uh, 1359 times e to the 0.139t. So let's dig into another problem. Uh, a culture has 500 bacteria. After three hours, it has 1,500. Uh, let's do two equations for it and how much it would have after 10 hours. So here's our two different models that we're going to use. A uh, keen-eyed person might notice that this had tripled. So you could actually cheat a little bit. Not cheat, but be really clever and do this because it triples in three hours. But we are going to do it in terms of... Uh, Oh, and then it'd be times 500, right, initial amount. But we're going to do it in terms of the, the doubling model and the E model. So let's do the doubling model first. Initial, well, that's 500. We, it's doubling in uh, some amount of time. We're not really sure how yet. So we need to find both T and A, how long it actually takes to double. So the way that we can solve for A is we actually have a time and an amount. We know that after three hours, there's 1,500. So we know that there's 1,500 of them after three hours. So divide both sides by 500. We want to get this A out of here, so let's uh, log base 2 both sides. Log base 2 of 3 is 3 over A. And then now, what I can do is, uh, 
how about I multiply both sides by a to get that out of there? So I have a log base 2 of 3 equals 3, and then divide both sides by log base 2 of 3. So this is the same as 3 divided by, I'm going to write this as natural log of 3 over natural log of 2. Right, that's just change of base formula, which is the same as 3 times natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 3. Shove that thing into my calculator. Point eight nine three, so it looks like that's how long it takes to double, and I think that was in days. If I, uh, no hours. So my model then would be uh, five hundred two to the time divided by one point eight nine three. All right, let's uh, do the same thing with that other model, with the E model. So we know our initial population is 500. And uh, we don't know the rate or the time yet. But we do, well, we're, time's just going to be our variable. But we do know that after three hours, it got up to 1,500. So we're just going to solve that for R. Divide both sides by 500. A natural log both sides divide by three see how algebraically that one's a little little easier <laughs> a little less work a natural log of three divided by three I get about 0. 0.3662 So it would be 500 e to the rate 0.3662 t. That would be my model for this. And then uh, if I wanted to know how much after 10 hours, I could just plug in 10 for t for both of these. And they both, they both give me the same answer. Um, one connection I want to make is, think back to money. This would be continuous compounding, $500 at 36%. So this gives you a nice kind of per idea of that percentage uh, type of increase for continuous compounding that this type of problem would be. A certain element has a half-life of 1,600 years. And, and what that means is, uh, however much you have, it, it takes 1,600 years for, for it to decay down to half of what it was. Um, so right now there's 300 grams of it. How long will it take to get down to 50 grams? And this is one of the issues about uh, like highly radioactive material. You know, it sits there with a really long half-life, um, basically messing up people's DNA, anyone who comes close to it, for a long time, because it takes a long time for it to go away. Um, so we have these two models. And I think that there's two ways for me to think about this doubling model. Instead of doubling, it's halving. So I could say... I have an equation like this. This would is the same as if I negate this, so it's decaying instead of growing. And this is because a negative exponent flips the fraction, right? Like two to the negative one is one half. So I could go either route with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go this route with this one. This equation is pretty easy to set up from here. It has a half life of 1,600 years. Um, so the amount of time it takes to get down to a half is 1600. And then the, it gives me the initial amount right here, 300 times a half. So there's my equation right there if I want to use, uh, use a doubling time like one. If I wanted to solve it with, with E, I know it's going to be 300 E to some rate times time. So um, to get this rate, I'm just going to think of it this way. Like if I started with one of it, I want it to get down to one half. 
how long is that going to take uh, for it to happen? Well, I know that my amount of time that it would be would be 1600 years times my rate. And then from here, I can get uh, pretty easily to what my what my rate is as a percentage. Um, natural log. Divide by 1600. So let me do that on my calculator. Natural log 0.5. Close off the parentheses. Divide by 1600. And notice this number is, is not just negative 4.332. See this e to the negative 4. Um, that's like in scientific notation. So that's like times 10 to the negative 4th. So this decimal actually goes this way four places. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0. 0.0004 about. So, which is which makes sense because it's decaying at a pretty slow rate if, if half of it's left after 1,600 years. So this R value is that. That'd be like 0.04%. So this would be 300 times e to the negative 0 0.0004 t. And again, if you wanted to figure out this answer, how long how long to get to 50 grams, you'd set it equal to 50 and solve. Set this equal to 50 and solve. All right, give these problems a try. Uh, let me know what questions you have. Either message me or throw them into the chat.